Lesson 12, Sections and Numbering. When organizing a layout that requires multiple pages, it will often be necessary to divide the content of your project for visual organization purposes. This can be to divide a long article into subsections through the use of headings and subheadings, or a book into multiple chapters. When a large project is subdivided for organization, the new divisions are called sections. Each section can then be numbered according to the section. Books, for example, have many sections, like copyright information, a table of contents, a foreword or a prologue, a dedication, many chapters, a glossary, appendices, reference pages, and more. Each subdivision of the book is defined as its own section for organization purposes, and then each section can be numbered as needed. The first chapter of a book usually starts on page one, so any page that occurs before the first page of the chapter can be numbered with Roman numerals instead of numbers, then all the chapter pages can be numbered in sequence starting with page one. Subdividing a project should be done both visually and technically. The ultimate goal of subdividing a layout into sections is to increase the end user experience of your design. You want your viewers to be able to successfully navigate your layout which includes understanding where one section ends and the next begins, and you want them to be able to quickly find whatever they're looking for. This is achieved through visual composition. Your decisions as a designer, as you are establishing your layout, will affect the end user's experience. In addition to designing your layout so that the sections are clear, you should also prepare your electronic layout files so that the visual sectioning is supported within the file. Automating the processes of establishing sections and numbering in your document increases the efficiency of your design and your electronic design process. An organized file will allow for quick edits, automation of additional processes like when populating a table of contents, and the creation of electronic page layouts that have searchable sections and quick navigation. Sections should be established when mapping out your project. You should decide how many sections are needed and how your content will be broken up as part of your preliminary work process. Once you know exactly how your project needs to be broken into sections, you can set those sections via the Pages panel. Launch the Pages panel via the Window menu and then choose Numbering and Section Options via the Options Flyout menu. You can also find the same option via the Layout menu. This launches the Numbering and Section Options dialog. If you open this dialog on the page that starts a section, it'll be called the Numbering and Section Options dialog. If you open it on a page that is within a section, you will get the option to create a new section, so it'll become the New Section dialog. All of the settings are still the same. Before we add new sections, let's take a look at the Pages panel. There is a small triangle above page one. This is a section marker. It is a visual indicator to the InDesign user that a section exists. You will see a new triangle above the page that starts each new section. Remember this so that if something happens to your numbering or you get confused and have to figure out how to fix an error, you know where to look. When in doubt, get rid of all of your extra sections and just start over. The Numbering and Section Options dialog has several options that may be of interest. First, if you are on any page that does not already start a section, aka if you are on any page except for page 1 right now, you will have the option to start a section. This creates a new section. In my example, I have selected page 3, which did not already start a new section. This launched the Numbering and Section Options dialog which is called the new section dialog because there is not already a selection present. I then selected the option to start a section and press the OK button to save the changes. It doesn't really look like anything happened within my document, but if you look closely at the pages panel, you can now see that a new section starts on page one like it originally did, and now there's a new section that starts on page three. Sections are established both visually and technically within a design. Visually, I can make sure my design decisions communicate where a new section starts, like when a new chapter begins. And on the technical side, 
Dividing an InDesign document into sections provides additional benefits, like being able to renumber pages, or even change the format of page numbering so that it is different for different parts of a project. In this next example, I am making a 32-page self-cover booklet of short stories for an English class. It is my intention to break the booklet down into the following sections. Pages 1 and 2 will be the front cover and then a blank page on the inside of the front cover. Pages 3 and 4 will be the title page and the blank page beyond the title page. Pages 5 through 28 will be six short stories. I will use a new section for each story and each story will be exactly four pages long. Pages 29 and 30 will be a student acknowledgements and references section and pages 31 through 32 will be the back cover and the blank page on the inside of the back cover. I've mapped out my plan. Now I can go about creating these sections within my InDesign document. To create this project, I first created my document. For my purposes, it must have 32 pages. It is also a good idea to add content to your pages. The technical setup is easier to keep organized if you can see what is on each page as you are dividing your content into sections. For the purposes of this example, I have color coded the pages so you can see where one section ends and the next begins. Then, starting at the beginning of my document, I selected the first page of each section. Page one starts the first section, which is my front cover and the inside front cover. I want to launch the numbering and sections dialog so that I can make decisions about this section. I don't have to create the section because it already exists, but I may want to change the settings for it. Let's keep this example simple. I don't want to make any changing to the numbering. The only thing I need to do is give my section a prefix. I am doing this because I know later on I am going to start numbering my document from page one, which will technically start on the document's fifth page. You can't have two page ones in the same document. So by adding a prefix, I can have a section A page one and a section B page one and a section C page one or whatever I decide to label or prefix my sections. If you look closely at my pages panel, all the pages are now labeled FC1, FC2, FC3, and so on. That's because I use the FC prefix to represent the front cover. This is only going to be applicable to pages one and two. I need to move on to section two to be able to set the settings for that section. So to create section two, I need to start a new section. It will start on page three. So I selected page three in my document and launched the numbering and section options dialog because it is a new section. Instead of being called the numbering and section options dialog, it appears as the new section dialog. Again, we'll keep it simple. I'm not going to adjust any numbering settings. I just want to make sure that I'm starting a new section and that I'm using automatic page numbering and I set a prefix for my section. This is the title section, so I'm going to use T for my prefix. When I select OK, you will see starting with page three, the pages are now numbered T3, T4, and T5. The prefix has switched, so every page from here and below now has the T prefix, but the numbering has not changed because I didn't tell it to restart the numbering. These changes flow downhill through the document. That's why it's best to work from the beginning of the document to the end. Let's keep going. The next section is for short story one. Each short story will be four pages. So this story will be on the document pages five, six, seven, and eight. To start a new section, I selected page five and launched the new section dialog. Again, I need to make sure start section is active, but this time I do care about the numbering. I want my visual page numbers to start on page five, meaning I want page five to say that it's the first page in the book. So it will say page one and the next page will say page two and the page after that will say page three. To achieve this, I need to change the automatic page number setting. 
to start page numbering at and then start the numbering at page one. Don't forget to give your short story a prefix. I am going to use S for story and then A, B, C, D, E, and F for the six different stories. So this is the first story. I will use S, A for story A. When you select OK, you can look at the Pages panel, and now page 5 has a prefix of SA, and it starts with page number 1. And then because the changes flow downhill, you can look at each subsequent page. It now has the same prefix, SA, and it starts the numbering, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Let's repeat this process for stories 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I'm only going to demo short story 2. You will need to repeat the steps for all five stories. Short story two starts on document page nine. Select that page and then launch the number and section options dialog, which will be the new section dialog because we're creating a new section. Make sure start section is active. We want the page numbering to continue from the previous section. So we want to make sure that we are again using automatic page numbering. Don't forget to give your new section a prefix. I'm going to use SB for story B and select OK. And again, if we check that setting, you can see where the page numbering started. It now says SB. And instead of starting with number one again, it continues the page numbering from the previous section. So it's SB5, SB6, SB7, and SB8. I went ahead and created sections SC, SD, S, E, and S, F, so that I have a new section for each of my six short stories. Your document should look like the screenshots below. Each story is exactly four pages. Each has a new prefix label, but starting with the fifth page in the document, the numbering starts at page one and continues through page 24, which is the end of the sixth story. This design requires two last sections to finish the layout of the book. Start a new section on page 29, that's document page 29, for the acknowledgments and references. I used the R prefix to represent references. I am also planning to use Roman numerals to number these pages, so I changed the numbering settings to start numbering at page 1 again, and I changed the style to be the lowercase Roman numeral option. The last section will not be numbered, but I still want to establish it as a section, so I created a new section that starts on page 31. I used BC for the prefix to describe the back cover section and used automatic page numbering. Creating sections is only half the battle. Now we want to actually use the settings. One of the quickest benefits of establishing sections is to be able to automate page numbering. In this example, I only want page numbering on the short story pages and the references section. The rest of the pages will not display any page numbers. Automated page numbering is added in InDesign using a marker. You can add page numbering via the type menu. With an active text cursor blinking, choose the type menu, insert special characters, markers, and current page number. This can be added to a parent page so that the page numbers are added to all pages quickly or done on each page individually, depending on your needs. I am going to add the page numbering to parent page A. Again, create a text frame with the text cursor blinking and then choose the type menu, insert special character, markers, and current page number. Since we are on parent A, the page number displays as an A. But if we navigate to our real pages, we can see the number changes depending on which section and which page within the section we are on. I don't want page numbering on all of my pages, so I'm going to apply the None parent page to every page that does not get page numbers. Once I am done, I can scroll through my document to see pages 1 through 24 listed on the six short story pages, and I can see page I and II on the two reference pages. 
It is a good idea to keep your sections as simple as possible when you are learning how to create sections and adjust document numbering. Things can get out of hand really quickly. I recommend the following basic tips when working with sections and numbering. First, add your content to your pages. Make sure it's there and you can see exactly where a new section starts. Two, map out your plan on paper first so that you are truly understanding exactly what you are trying to do. Three, work your way from the beginning of your document to the end because your changes will flow downhill. Four, check your work along the way. You don't want to get to section 10 and realize that you did something wrong in section three. Five, select the first page of a section and relaunch the numbering and section options dialog if you ever need to remove an unwanted section. Simply uncheck the start section option to get rid of it. If you adjusted additional settings like the prefix or numbering order, you will want to reverse those settings too. And one last tip is to remember that odd number pages always land on the right hand side of a book and even numbered pages land on the left hand side. So if you tell a page that it must be either an odd or an even number, you are telling the page that it must be a right or a left hand side page. This can break your document. Make sure you aren't creating gaps where you have missing pages because you've forced a page to land on the right or the left hand side of your page spread. Mm -hmm.